In this question, we're asked to compare the potential energy, calculate and compare the potential energy between points C and points A of this slider with a spring. So we have to calculate the potential energy. In this case, there's um, two, poor, two um, aspects to the potential energy, gravitational potential energy and um, potential energy stored in the spring. We're assuming at both of these positions Everything is at rest, so there is no kinetic energy. So we're going to start with A um, and calculate the potential energy of uh, this system over here. So when the spring is expanded by this much, and A is up here. So we're going to start with A. And in the case of A, we have the potential energy, VA, being equal to MGHA plus one half k um, s a squared okay and so that's s a is the stretch of the spring so the x minus l naught um, so in this case we're going to set our datum to be the bottom so h will start from here so h a will be um, um, this this full height over here um, and for C HC will just be zero because the datum is set there okay and then and again for your, your datum doesn't have to be at the bottom it can be anywhere um, but when you compare these two they will have respective to each other they will have the same energy difference um, so that's why it doesn't matter where the datum is. In this case, it's usually nice to pick the lowest one to be zero. So there's no gravitational potential energy for one of the two. And then for the other one, it's going to be a positive value. It's, um, it's not going to be downwards um, below the datum. So we have MGHA. So we can actually solve for this. Um, so this is going to be equal to mg times dc plus r, okay? Because this height here is this dc distance over here plus this radius over here. So that's going to be ha. Okay, so I'll actually draw this into the diagram. So this here is ha. Okay? And so it's dc plus r. And then we have our second term, which is 1 half times k, which we have, times sa. So as I mentioned, sa is going to be um, the length, the stretch, so delta x, which is the length of the stretch spring minus the initial unstretched length l naught and everything squared. Okay, so um, the stretch length is this uh, distance over here, um, which we can find with dB and dA. It's just the hypotenuse of that triangle. So that's going to be um, dA squared plus dB squared square rooted minus L naught, and then everything squared. Okay, so again, stretch length minus unstretched length, and then all squared. Um, and if we plug in values, we get the following. VA is going to be equal to 0 0.8 uh, kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared times HA, which is 1.3 meters plus 0 0.2 meters. And this is our first term, and then we have our second term, which is 1 half k, which is 600 newton meters, uh, newton per meter, sorry. And then we have our um, dA, so square root of 0 0.6 meters squared plus 0 0.9 meters squared minus 0 0.12 meters all squared. Okay, let me move this 
the right. And so if we solve for this, we get that VA is equal to 289.2 joules. So this is our first part of the answer, the energy, the potential energy stored um, in scenario A. Now we can do B, same process, or C, sorry, same process, um, but um, at a different location. So VC is going to be equal to uh, MGHC plus one half K FC squared. Okay, so in this case, remember HC is zero, so this first term cancels, and we're going to get um, zero plus one half K times this stretched length over here. Um, so let me actually draw those into the diagram. So this length here is uh, FC. This length here is SA. Okay, so SC is going to be equal to um, this um, X component here squared plus this x component here, which is the hypotenuse. Okay, so let's find that. It's going to be equal to uh, dA plus r squared. So dA plus r is this component here, plus dC plus r minus db squared. Okay, so dc plus r minus db brings you back to here. And so that is that um, height over there. Okay, and then we're summing the squares and then taking a square root to get the um, hypotenuse, so sc is hypotenuse over here. And then we are subtracting L naught and squaring everything. Okay, so VC is going to be equal to one half times 600 newtons per meter times um, the square root of dA is 0 0.6 meters plus r, which is 0 0.2 meters squared, plus 1.3 meters plus 0 0.2 meters minus 0 0.9 meters all squared, taking the square root of that, minus 0 0.12 meters all squared. And if we solve for VC, we get that uh, VC is equal to 232.3 joules. So this is second scenario. And if we can, com if we want to compare them, we can see that VA is bigger than VC. So in situation A, there is more potential energy than in situation C. Okay.